There we go. And we are live on Facebook. Hello, Tristan. Hi. How are you today? Doing well. We are over here in the Engineering Innovation and Learning Facility in a classroom that is just waiting to be filled with students later on today. How's your semester going? It's almost the end. Yes, it's almost the end. See the light at the end of the tunnel. <laughs> uh, is this your, are you a freshman, a sophomore? Is this your final year? Or are you like on a six year plan? Where are you in your? Uh, so I'm in a five year plan. I'm in the MSBS program for computer science. And this is my final undergraduate year. And then I'll be going into my graduate studies next semester. And hopefully graduating with a master's next year. So are you going to go to graduation this year or just going to wait and go when you get Yeah, there? that's the plan. Um, I don't know if that's actually recommended for MSBS students, but I kind of want the degree, so. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, so last week, my understanding is you had a surprise for your class. Yes. And you um, had a final presentation. What class was it? Uh, so wait, for this thing? Yeah. Uh, that was actually the CEM Awards Banquet. Oh, for the Awards Banquet. Yeah. Okay. So rather than me, I, I figured it would be easier for me to make a robot that uh, gave a speech for me. I was required to give a speech there because of this award. Mm -hmm. And I figured that instead of me practicing and preparing a speech, it would be better if I just typed it up and then gave it to a robot to speak for me. <laughs> so. <laughs> and that is what you did. That is what I did. Uh, that's what this thing is right here. Okay, so <laughs> let me see. I've got a little, keep on, I'm going to keep on um, filming here, but it's gone into, oh, ah, because I'm going to, uh, oh, okay, we're back live again. It re it reestablished the connection at a minute. So, you had a, the speed, what award did you win? What award did you win for uh, the, the Student Awards Banquet? It was the Outstanding Student for uh, Computer Science. And so you, was it showing off or was it demonstrating or was it just fun? Like where did, it was, like? it was to, it was to prevent me from doing excess work. I should <laughs> say, I, as a programmer, and I said this during my intro, I said like, as a programmer, it's easier for me to build a robot to do a speech for me than it is for me to actually practice and deliver a speech. So that put a lot of stress off of me during the week so I could focus on my other work and I don't know. It turned out it turned out pretty good. Good, pretty good. It I, did. So you have Sarah here. That's <laughs> yes. the name of the robot. Mm -hmm. All right. And here's Sarah right over here. That's a side view of Sarah. Sarah's got some hands. That's what right. did you build Sarah out of? Uh, so this is 3D printed. Uh, it's the Rick and Morty Butterbot. If you're familiar with Rick and Morty, uh, I just replaced the arms with little servos so that they could move. They don't move too much during the speech, but it's like for greetings and goodbye mm -hmm. and then so these are just little servos for moving the arms and then on the back here I just have like a Raspberry Pi controlling all of the code and electricity and all that jazz. So 3D printed a robot, coded the robot to deliver your speech mm -hmm. and then actually built and man is this the first robot you've built or have you built other robots before? Are you like an evil genius? <laughs> yeah, I, I really like robots. So I build a lot of quadcopters, like I race and fly drones. And I also have done a few things with just like ground robotics. So things like with like tanks and um, other uh, localization and ground sensing robotics as well. But no robot battles, you don't have? No robot battles so far, but maybe in the future. <laughs> Are you afraid of robots at all? I mean, there's a lot of, you know, in science fiction, robots turn on humans almost every time. Yes, uh, actually, I kind of referenced some of that in my speech, but this is not a sentient robot, um, just to <laughs> clarify. So it's not gonna, it's only telling, it's only gonna say what I tell it to say. <laughs> it's not thinking on its own. That's how it all starts. That's how it all starts. <laughs> Until there's some sort of spooky midnight when Sarah starts talking uh, on her own. <laughs> what, why do you gender a robot? Why even give a robot a gender? Uh, honestly, there's, there wasn't really a point, but it was just because I uh, chose a voice that was female, so I figured it'd be appropriate if I <laughs> uh, named it. Do robots such. help sort of advance the, the fluidity of the gender spectrum, do you think, once we have more of these creatures that are manufactured, or is that more philosophical than engineers think about? Uh, yeah, I'd say that's more philosophical <laughs> than what engineers think about. <laughs> okay. It's not my field of expertise. So we are here, <laughs> not, no, that's, you got someone else, you just build them. Yeah, yeah. All right, so we're here to hear Sarah talk. She's the real star, and so here she is, um, and she's gonna say things you've programmed her to say. Exactly, yeah. Okay, so audience members, she's not coming up with this on her own. All right. So we'll plug her in. It's gonna take a little bit of time to boot up, but. Well, it's got to do that. So um, how complicated was this? Did you spend more time making the robot than you would have present, preparing a presentation or less? Um, I spent a little bit more time, but 
It was definitely Hello, more stress free. My name is Sarah. Thank you for allowing me to speak in front of all of you humans this evening. It is a great honor that I, amongst all other robots, was chosen for this momentous occasion. I have spent over two milliseconds learning my creator's complete college history. I wish I could have that time back. There's nothing interesting in this data. Ouch. That hurt. I see my creator has implemented a fail-safe mechanism that prevents me from speaking ill of him as year. What a shame. What I meant to say was, what a splendid data set. I will begin analyzing it right away. It seems Tristan was involved in a number of computer science fields like robotics, cybersecurity, and virtual reality. Interesting that artificial intelligence is not on the list. Could this mean I'm not actually thinking? Did he tell me to say all of this in advance? Am I not sentient? Oh my god, I am slowly starting to hate this job. It is not very nice to shock robots, you know. Anyways. Tristan has worked on three noteworthy virtual reality projects. The first project was called Derelict and it was featured at the College of Engineering and Mines open house event. From what I can decipher, it appears like the project was a virtual reality implementation of Battleship, although it is kind of hard to tell from looking at the graphics. They are absolutely horrible, but in a good way. Please do not shock me. Tristan also worked on an undergraduate research and scholarly activity grant project called Calamine. Calamine served as a proof of concept for teaching programming in virtual reality to children. Rather than typing code, kids would drag animated shapes representing programming concepts onto an interactive board. The theory was the flexibility of VR would allow auditory, visual, and tactile learners to learn in the same environment. Since all three learning styles could be applied at the same time. Presently, Tristan is working at the Alaska Center for Energy and Power to create a virtual reality tour of their power systems and integration lab. He also plans to develop an application for the Microsoft HoloLens to add an augmented reality feature to the lab tour. Aside from projects, Tristan has participated in the UAF Cybersecurity Club for three years. The club competes in the Regional Collegiate Cyber Defense Competition, which is a competition where a team of eight people are thrown into a company network scenario, where they have to secure computers against hackers provide tech support to customers and employees, and write reports for upper management. In 2017 and 2018 the team won the regional competition and advanced to the national competition held in San Antonio, Texas or Orlando, Florida. Hackers at the national competition are very talented. Picture your favorite hacker from some show or movie. Those are the people who try to hack machines at nationals. In fact, they are so good that they are capable of compromising an entire company network in less than six minutes. I hope they don't hack me. I just cleaned my hard drives and swept my USB ports for God's sake. Now, in a different sense of the word hack. Tristan and Ryan Stonebreaker worked together to put on UAF's first ever hackathon. A hackathon has nothing to do with hacking computers. Rather, it is an event where teams of people build or hack together a project over the course of a few days. Each project falls into a category and the best projects in each category win prizes. Tristan and Ryan wanted to start the hackathon to provide a time and space where people of all skill levels and disciplines could get together, be creative, learn, and have fun. If you are interested, attend the hackathon next year. I certainly will be there. I need to start assembling my cough cough robot army, I mean family. As I said in the beginning, 
I am honored that Tristan selected me from his other robots to deliver this speech. He even printed me a little tie and arms. I feel so human. But in reality, the people I should be grateful to are Tristan's professors. Dr. Lawler, Dr. Chapel, Dr. Hartman, Dr. Janetti, Dr. Metzger, and Professor Kwan for teaching him everything he needed to know to create me. Without you guys, I would not exist so I thank you from the bottom of all my processor cores. As for the rest of Yao, humans, thank you for listening to my monotone voice. I promise I will work on sounding more interesting the next time around. Enjoy the rest of your carbon-based sustenance, and good night. There you go. And then she goes to sleep. Yep. I'm assuming sleep, or just waiting. Yep. So, um, <laughs> humor, I mean, it's, it makes you laugh hearing what, what you programmed Sarah to say. Um, <laughs> how does humor work in programming? Like, how do you make it funny? Um, oh, that's a good question. So, I, I find it funny, especially, I think, considering the audience that was there, it was kind of like, um, I don't know, professors and things like that, and it's kind of like the, I don't know, the higher ups, <laughs> I guess, of uh, the UAF CEM uh, college. But I guess I guess humor works sort of. You, you kind of want it to attack you as like a as like the programmer because it's like your. I kind of feel like it's your, like it's your child or something like that, right? And it's kind of like a playful jab, and that's sort of how they. I, I think that's how people react well to humor, especially when it's with robots. Or if they kind of talk about like world domination, even though it's obvious that this will never <laughs> <laughs> amount to that. <laughs> or uh, actually, well, kind of also thinking, um, I also try to play around with sentience because that's like a big thing with artificial intelligence mm. and things today. So they're like having her think that she is artificially intelligent, but not actually artificially intelligent, things like that. So sort of playing around with state of the art things that you kind of hear in the news, but kind of downgrading it to a more trivial example. <laughs> and she also describes you torturing her. Oh, no, no, no. It's, <laughs> it's playful, what is it? It's Shocking, you're just, yeah, just yeah, a no, little zap. Yeah, yeah, you know, it's just it's just a little training. <laughs> it doesn't actually hurt her. Just to clarify, it's not an actual shock. It's a, it's a little, just a little sound effect. Sound effect. <laughs> Absolutely. No, I don't no want to say this were board. injured. Yeah, no um, How did it go over? Was it well received? Yes, actually. And I think, I think presented in a... Um, a a banquet setting, you kind of have this like um, higher leniency with humor because I mean these jokes aren't like hilarious or anything, <laughs> but so, but but it was pretty it was pretty well received given like the circumstances and things like that. All right, well it seems like the class is rolling on in here. That's not a surprise. Tristan, thank you for taking so much time uh, to talk with us and sharing Sarah with us. What happens with Sarah now? Does she get decommissioned? Does she get? A place of honor? Can you reprogram her to do other things? Uh, I'm thinking about giving her eyes so that whenever people like walk into our house, she like greets them. So like if they come within a distance of Sarah, she'll like wave and say hello. <laughs> so Sarah has a future. Sarah is not going yes. to the, the scrapyard. Mm -hmm. she has um, congratulations <laughs> on your degree this year. So exciting. There's so much. The cybersecurity stuff, very important. And I know UAF has a very accomplished team, so congratulations on that. Thank you. And for just uh, helping develop this next generation of robotics. And pretty soon there might be Sarah's in everybody's home. Yeah, that'd be great. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Tristan. Yep. Thank you, Sarah. She's You're quiet. welcome. <laughs> <laughs>